Again, I'm Shannon Rollins. I've been here in this area about 20 years now. We have um, an Aiken office off of Baby Drive, which is if you're going down Silver Club, take a ride on Baby, like you go to the Ross or the Old Navy. Look to the left instead. We're on the left hand side there. Um, we also have our mortgage company, Model Mortgage Simplified, in that same building right next to my real estate office. And that was a great asset that we added a few years ago where it made it so that if we're helping somebody buy something, we can help them get qualified and get the lowest closing cost, lowest interest rate. But it also helped our sellers because oftentimes people make offers on the evenings and weekends on houses and the banks are closed and buyers don't necessarily have pre-approval letters. So we can say, hey, no, you've got to talk to model mortgage so we know for sure you're a qualified buyer so we don't get you in a contract as a seller with a buyer that cannot qualify. So that was a great, great thing that we added. Um, in addition, we have an office in North Augusta that North Augusta office is located downtown North Augusta that allows us to service the entire Augusta area easily by jumping across the river. So um, we do service the entire CSRA. Um, a few a few years ago, you know, I've been in this business 20 years here in this area. About 10 years ago, we started noticing that we were helping a lot of seniors making the downsizing, right sizing, as some people call it, move. And we're helping them through the whole process from, you know, from the very beginning, evaluating what do they need to do to their home? Do they need to do anything to their home in order to prepare it to put it on the market? Um, helping them decide what things they need to keep. If they're downsizing, you have a lot of stuff that you have to handle getting rid of, sorting through, deciding what to keep, what not to keep, what to donate, what to give the family. Helping them do that process. And having, um, how are they going to get rid of things like the state sales? A lot of people don't think about this, but estate sales are not just for those people that have passed. Therefore, we use them all the time to help our clients be able to make that transition and sort through what they have so that they don't have to take everything with them when they go to, to the next place. And it can become a little overwhelming, but having all of those kind of contacts, contacts uh, we realized that it was important for us probably to more formalize this, and we started our move management division in our company. And so we've been able to help hundreds of people through this downsizing process to, just to make it a little more easy to envision what the next steps are. So that's why we're excited to be able to be here with you today to share, um, share some information. Um, I would, if everybody would be sure they silence their phones, especially my staff, so we don't have those going off, um, that would be great. Okay. Let's see if we're working here. Um, our materials today here were written by Nikki Buckaloo. She's a, a veteran realtor like myself, been in the business 20 years. She's out of Oklahoma City. She's also the founder of the Senior Real Estate Institute. And so this piece of material here is fabulous. There's a lot of details. There's way more details in here than we're going to cover today. But again, yeah, this is a great tool that you're going to find as you go through. It will help, really help you start thinking through the process. Um, and really what it does, it's going to cover five steps. One, creating the plan. Two, communicating with your family members. Three, surrounding yourself with the professionals that can help you implement the plan. Four, dealing with the house full of possessions. And five, celebrating your new life and the changes that you're making. Um, you know, I experienced this myself with my family 15 years ago. My mom and dad, um, they're in Colorado. They lived in their 1960s tri-level house. Master bedroom's upstairs. My dad's 10 years older than my mom. And so 15 years ago, they decided, you know, these steps are becoming a little bit not so manageable for dad. So they came to my sisters and I and said, we're, we have been looking around. We're going to find a ranch house and we're going to make a move out of the family home. And I think they were afraid that my little sister would freak out and not want them to move from the family home. That's why they came to us. But we were thrilled. We were like, that's a great plan. We're here to support you. What can we do to help? And so that really got us thinking about that. And then seven years ago, my in-laws, my husband's family, um, they were in their 1960s house. They built too, but it was a ranch. So dad thought that he could, you know, he built a ramp, make it so he could get in from the carport into the house as he aged, no problem. He's a butcher, been a butcher all his life, been standing. He knew that he was going to have problems at some point. But they didn't really think about the inside of the house. I know everybody's been in the 1960s house probably. The doorways are about this wide. You know, the master shower is not much bigger than me. 
And there's no way he could get a wheelchair or a rollator into that bathroom. And so we talked to him about that. He was all up for doing some updating, you know, getting the laundry room out of the carport into the house. But mom wasn't. She she threw a fit. She was crying. She didn't want anything to change on her house. So we backed off, you know, didn't talk about it anymore as the kids. Two years later, they had an episode. He had to go in the hospital. She was now developing dementia, and he wasn't there to take care of her. He's in the hospital. He can't go back to the house now. He's in a wheelchair, and now it's an emergency situation. They didn't plan ahead. They didn't look ahead for options or even want to consider options. And now the kids, his two sons, had to make the decision for him. Fortunately, they were in a position they could go quickly buy another ranch house that had these white doorways and, and, you know, so he could accommodate being in the wheelchair. But had they planned ahead, they probably would have made a better decision. And I'm not sure the two sons made the best decision we have learned, you know, since then. Um, and we'll talk about that more later. But with all that being said, that is kind of what led us into really trying to focus on how can we help seniors make this transition as easy as possible. Um, so the first question, you know, a lot of people you need to ask yourself is, you know, as we say here, what type of lifestyle do I want to have? Um, what what do I want near me? Do I want to have my family near me? Are my family are they in a different state? Do I need to be making a transition out of the area? Do I want to be close to doctor's offices? Do I want to be close to activities where I can have social engagement and lots of opportunity to be with other people? And there's a lot of good questions that are asked in this magazine when you look through it that it kind of gives you an opportunity to reflect for yourself about you know what works best for you or what, or what makes sense for you to have up. Where do I stand financially? If you're eliminating the house that you're in now, what kind of funds are you going to be getting from the house in order to make that transition? It's probably one of the first things you need to know before you decide what you're going to do. Um, you might also be evaluating what kind of um, what kind of expenses are you eliminating by not having the house that you've freed up that might allow you to go into a different kind of living arrangement? Um, and then what is really necessary to prepare for the move? It, I know it can be overwhelming to think, I've got all of my stuff, I've got my parents' stuff that have passed away now in my house, and I've just got so much stuff, how am I going to ever get through this? So it is a big job, and most people get overwhelmed. And that's why we want to help it is just an overwhelming process to go through. So really there are three reasons why people decide to downsize. The first one is social engagement. Studies show that people that stay socially and mentally engaged with people live longer, are healthier, and have healthier, longer lives. Joyce, I think you guys are a good example. You guys are out and about doing a lot of activities, and, and you guys are amazing. Um, so remaining socially engaged. So a lot of times people have been living in a house that they're in a neighborhood where the kids grew up, big lots, maybe a swimming pool where all the kids used to play, but now the kids are gone. The kids have moved across the country, the grandkids are with them, and so now you're just taking care of this big lot and, and the house. And there's not a lot of social engagement opportunities. So a lot of times people think, well, let me evaluate what other areas are there in the community where I can have the opportunity to go, you know, go engage with people and have lunch or go do the hobbies that I've been wanting to do all, all my life that I've never had time for. And there's a lot of places like that around here that people just aren't aware until you start really looking into it to evaluate. You know, everybody knows like Woodside is a great Nobody calls it a 55 or older community, but it's a fabulous community for a lot of social engagement opportunities. And there's a lot of other communities like that in this area. And again, sometimes people think that maybe they need to explore looking, moving to where their family is to be closer for you know, social for support. The second reason is the house becomes a burden. Kind of like with my mom and dad, the tri-level was too much. You know, I'll oftentimes we'll go visit people and they're in a big two-story house, the same thing with a big lot and they need to downsize. So sometimes it does make sense to downsize, you know, to a ranch home, a patio home, a condo, a townhome, something to make it so your life is more manageable and then you can go enjoy the things that you want to enjoy. Um, health and wellness is the third reason, really critical. I mentioned that my husband's parents, you know, the boys bought them this house, got them into this house. And what we found when we go start visiting them is they were losing weight rapidly. 
He was in a wheelchair now because he had that episode. Mom is now getting dementia, so she's sitting around also. They're losing weight. We drive from here to Alabama five hours to go visit them every you know four or five weeks. And we noticed this. And because we stayed with them when we're there, we really got to see what their routine was. You know, they're eating a biscuit with a sausage in the morning and three crackers for dinner. That was their food. And the brother that lived there didn't realize this because um, you know, he wasn't staying with them full time, so he didn't see this. So health and wellness is really important. As we age, our appetites change, and becoming sedentary can cause, you know, cause illness and, and more doctor's appointments and all that. So that's, you know, another one of the reasons why people decide to make a downsize or right size weight. So the very first step is creating your plan. Um, and the first step in creating the plan is talking with people. Um, to start seeing what your options out there. Um, it's kind of funny, as kids, parents are always planning for us. If we, you know, if we have a house that has a two-story, we might have a good discussion with the kids about if there's a fire, here's the ladder we go outside. So we're planning ahead. When I was a kid growing up in school, we'd have tornado drills. So when that drill went off, I knew exactly where to go. And had we not practiced or didn't kind of have a plan ahead of time and a tornado came through, it could have been a disaster. So having a plan as adults, a lot of times we don't do that, kind of like my in-laws do, and they didn't have some contingency plans, and so it could, you know, became kind of a problem. So it's a good thing if you kind of start planning ahead. So I commend you all for being here to just starting the idea of downsizing and having a plan in place. Um, and so actively researching and talking with people to figure out what your options might be. I've asked him uh, to join us today, Kim, with Kim Rayfield, with, uh, she's a community relations director with the Benton House of Aikens. And she's been in senior um, housing for a long time. And so she was going to talk with us just for a minute to explain some of the different options. I know a lot of people don't realize that there are so many different things out there nowadays. My um, family thinks of the nursing home that my grandpa was in 50 years ago is what you know some of the senior housing is now. And that's not really what is out there. So Kim, if you would share with us a bit, we appreciate that. Sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate Shannon and your team asking me to be here today. So I'm Kim Rayfield, and um, I work at Benton House of Aiken. We're in the village, um, Woodside Village. This works. Is that better? Push me in. How about that? <laughs> okay. So um, anyway, Benton House of Aiken, we are a licensed assisted living. And um, does everybody, has everybody seen where we are before? In Woodside, it's been there four and a half years. Um, and so when, it said, when I say licensed assisted living, does everybody understand what an assisted living is? We offer assistance with activities of daily living. So I wanted to explain just a little bit. For the last 12 years, I worked at Cumberland Village, which is an independent living community. So I thought I would maybe explain for a few minutes the differences between those so that everybody could understand that. So you have um, independent living facilities are those that you, they're providing a worry-free lifestyle. For you not have to worry about cooking and cleaning and maintenance and things like that. But no nursing. No nursing care is an independent living. And then you have assisted living, such as the Benton House, and we are providing care. We have nursing staff there 24 hours a day, but there is no one that is completely bedridden in assisted living. They're there still to have fun and enjoy that worry-free lifestyle with some assistance. And then you have your third level of um, senior care, which is as you all think of probably from your parents, the nursing home. And that is the one that we refer to as the skilled nursing facility, um, a long-term healthcare community. Um, and hopefully no one ever has to live there full time. Most people that are at a skilled nursing facility are just there for a temporary stay for rehab. I don't know if any of you have ever had an incident maybe with a broke hip or had to have a knee replacement or something like that. And you may have had to go to one of those skilled nursing facilities for a little short stay. So that explains a little bit about those. 
Um, continuing care retirement community, we don't have any of those in Aiken. The closest one is in Augusta. Um, Brandon Wild is a continual care, and you have a buy-in. You buy into the community at a large amount of money, and you also pay your monthly amount. Um, the difference in the independent living community, Cumberland Village here in Aiken, is there's not a buy-in because they're not the CCRC, as she's listed there. Um, Shannon, Miss, um, she mentioned the planned adult communities. That's a little bit sort of like she and I were talking about. Woodside um, is a lot like that. There's lots of Joyce and Teresa, my friends over here, they um, <laughs> live there and they know that there's always things to do in Woodside to stay engaged. And of course, there's a lot of other places in Aiken that um, have some small patio homes, such as Caldea Landing. Um, those folks typically are, does anybody live in Caldea Landing? Um, that one's a 55 plus neighborhood as well, too. So um, if anybody has any questions about Benton House, I would be happy to answer those. I brought some brochures. Um, and if ever you, if you, of course, I would hope that you would use Shannon to sell your home if you decided to move to Benton House one day. Um, and if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer those later. Oh, I'm sorry. My goodness, how could I forget that one? Yes, so we do have um, at Benton House, we have assisted living and memory care as well. So um, memory care is for folks that need to be in a safe environment because of their dementia. And um, I like to say it's sort of like living in Woodside. It's gated, so it is locked. And that is for their safety. If you know anyone that has dementia and they may forget um, that that's where they live, and maybe they're exit seeking and they're trying to go out, it's just safe for them, for them to be in an environment with a locked door. They live just as the folks that are in the assisted living. They have their own activities, they have their dining room and whatnot, but it is a small environment. So for example, at Benton House, we have two memory neighborhoods and one of the, each one of those house 15 people. So that small environment is very important for them to be there. And if they need anything, everything is right there close together. So that's memory care. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kim. All right. So one of the things I was so shocked about when I went to visit some of these living communities is they were beautiful. There are some that are not so nice. I will say, I did unfortunately visit a couple, but some were just like spectacular. And um, so there are some very nice facilities out there. But of course, a lot of people think that they want to first make that move to transition down um, to a smaller patio, town or condo, and that's what we're here for. The next step is communicating with your family and friends. Not all families communicate well together. I don't know, I got a crazy older sister. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what we'll do with her. But anyway, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to communicate with family members about what you want and what you prefer to happen um, should something happen. So it's really an if. If something should happen, I would like to have this. And as you have talked to different uh, people, looked at different communities, you're kind of establishing, and as you follow through in your uh, booklet, it'll identify, you know, kind of make a list of what it is you'd like, where you'd like to go. If this happens, this is what I would like to have happen. If this happens, then I would prefer this to happen. So it really is a great guide to help you think through it and to share it with your family and friends. And there's also um, an example of a letter in your booklet that you might say have for kids to kind of share with them what your mm -hmm. desires are as well. And when you're talking with your family, it's usually more about, I'm wanting to tell you this is what we're going to do. Honey, mom and dad, we, we have decided that we're going to go make this change. We have looked at these different communities and in 12 months, we're going to put the house up for sale and we're going to move to this area. And we just wanted to let you know is a way you might tell you know, the family. Um, getting their support is important, but you don't necessarily need their permission. Because you, if you want to make the decision for yourself, that's a way that you want to start communicating with them um, and establish them the expectations. Here is a sample letter that you might have in there. It's in your book as well. Um, so really just sharing all the information with them about where you're hoping to move to will make it an easier transition altogether. 
Um, you know, everybody, when they make a move, they need support. And so surrounding yourself with the people that can help you make that transition is important. Um, with our company, um, step three, of course, is surround yourself with the qualified professionals. With our company, we're going to help guide you through that whole process and have relationships with professionals that we've developed over the years that can help you with each of those steps of the way. And one of the things I mentioned before is talking with estate people is something a lot of people decide to do. Uh, the great thing about having an estate person handle, handle the downsizing your things is that you don't have a bunch of people traipsing through your house. If you're doing a garage sale, you're having a lot of strangers in your home. If you're having this estate person handle the liquidation of the things that you no longer wanted to keep or give to family, then, um, then a lot of times I'll handle this process online. And it's great because you don't have all these people in your house. They also will go through the entire process of getting everything sold. So there's usually things that don't get sold. They then have contact with a, a, an additional estate liquidator, if you will, that comes in and buys everything that is remaining. So the key is you need to look at your contracts with estate people when you do to say, is there a minimum in there? Um, and what is the charge that they're they're going to be taking? You know, it's usually 30 to 40 percent in our community. Um, and if you have a lot of stuff left in the house, if you think about it, you are paying them this minimum fee to clean out the house. Because what they really do is they're going to go take care of getting rid of everything so you don't get yourself worn out and exhausted before you make your move. But they're also going to have the house room swept clean so that it's ready for the buyer to move in. You will not have to take care of disposing of anything. But there are so many different types of estate people out there that it's really critical that, um, that you look at all these details and be sure you know what you're getting yourself into. And that's why we have established relationships with people that we use all the time that we've had great reviews and can really um, help our, our clients out well. The critical thing is that everybody's needs are different. And so we like to sit and, and have a consultation with you to figure out what your needs are specifically so we can determine who's the best person to assist you with that um, process. Um, we also have obviously contacts for, like I mentioned, preparing your house. If you need to get rid of some, replace some wood rod on the house, or you're wondering if you need to replace the dirty carpet, um, or if wallpaper's an issue, or just any kind of repairs you might need on the house that have kind of gone to the wayside for a while, that's where we can come in and I can say before you do anything, these are the things we need to focus our attention on. Let me help get these people over here for you. A lot of times we hear that when people have small jobs that need to be done, you can't get people there to get them done. Workers just don't show up for small jobs, but we have the context because we work with these people all the time that they will get there and, you know, and be responsive and take care of it. Um, and they know they, they're going to do that because they know we're not going to refer them anybody else in, <laughs> unless they do. So they do a really good job for our clients. Um, so sorting at step four is obviously dealing with everything you have in there. They're really good about helping you sort through things. Um, trying to decide which things you're going to keep, what things are, you know, family heirlooms, keepsakes, disposables. Um, charitable items, trash, and valuables. So they're really good about helping you sort through that. If you're going to do it all, who's really good? Um, the the contacts that we use. So our estate people, they'll help you through that that part. Any part you want to have assistance with. Yeah, yeah. So we are happy to come in and and give you some guidance with that and recommend who might be best to help you if you want assistance. If you don't want assistance, you want to do it yourself, we always say start with these five categories. You know, start sorting through your things, cabinet by cabinet, closet by closet, room by room, to sort through to decide what is something you're going to keep and, and move with you, what is something you're going to donate, what is something that is a family item you're going to give to a family item, what is trash and what you might sell. And don't get overwhelmed by it. We have a lot of clients that they try to take on this process by themselves and they get really overwhelmed by it. And so we recommend you literally take 15 minutes a day, an hour a day, so you don't overdo it um, and, and just focus on one little part at a time. But the, the important thing is if you're thinking about downsizing and you're overwhelmed by what all you have in the house, having us come in there first just to say, 
Don't worry about these things. This doesn't matter. It's not going to matter. It's not going to impact the center of your home. So we can help guide you on where to focus your, your energy. So step five, then, is obviously adjusting to your new lifestyle um, and enjoying where you are at. It takes time to adjust. Um, so, you know, be aware of your feelings, communicate with your family, uh, continue to stay active and involved. Everybody needs support when you're making that kind of change. So again, the, the steps are really, really detailed in here. There's a lot of great information in your booklet that you guys can read take with you that will kind of guide you through all of this. You know, staying active um, in, in step five is important. Keep yourself active. Staying in touch with family, folks staying on physical activity, educate yourself, continue getting out and socializing, um, and taking the time to explore your new lifestyle and, and learn new things. So the steps, creating a plan, first step. Second one, communicating with family and surrounding yourself with a professional that can help make that happen for you. Dealing with your house full of possessions is the fourth step. And the fifth is, you know, celebrating your new lifestyle. So we're here to help you um, any way we can. Like I said, everybody's needs are a little bit differently, so that's why we don't get into a lot of details about, you know, who you should contact, you know, and that type of thing at this point, but we're happy to assist you with where you like. It's really critical working with somebody that's used to doing a senior housing or a uh, downsizing or right sizing move is much different than just selling a home and moving to the next home because you have all kinds of stuff that you have to deal with. So it's a lot different than just making a move from one house to another. You have to th be thinking about all that. And so somebody that is experienced doing that is going to be the one that's going to be in touch with whoever's on the other end where you're going to make sure timing wise it works. So you don't have any problems from a timing perspective. I had one um, realtor friend who she had somebody that was moving um, out of the area, and she was here. She got the, the client's house under contract and committed to a move date, but the place that they were going was not going to be ready. They were moving into a bungalow. It was being built, and it wasn't going to be ready for another three weeks. They were in a panic. They had signed contracts on both ends, put money down. They're going to be homeless for three weeks. This realtor friend didn't think about, you know, the whole timing issue. So it's really important that you have somebody that's thinking about all that to help make it smooth for you as possible. So what did they end up doing going into a hotel? <laughs> they had to do something like that at the other end. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about their belongings? Yeah, stayed in a, a big truck storage for a while. It ended up costing them money. It's kind of like they didn't plan ahead. There, there wasn't somebody there looking out for them for their whole the whole scenario. And that's why it's a much different move than just a regular move when you're moving everything with you. Yeah. Can you just tell us about the pros and cons of when you downsize? What about the benefits of renting versus buying? That's a great question. That is really a great question. A lot of people. Um, don't want to have have the worry of owning something. Not only do they not want the maintenance and, uh, and that commitment of that, but they, they do decide that they prefer to go find a rental environment. And there are communities like that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that there is, it, it's all personal to you as to what your personal situation is and what your preference is. Um, so I think there are benefits to that as well. Mm -hmm. yes. Any other questions? I was just going to piggyback on uh, what you were saying. I think that we've worked with several clients who have decided, I'll stand over here, uh, who have decided that it does make more sense to rent. That way, when the time does come where they have to make those larger decisions, their family and their children's not having to do it for them and make it for them. Okay. Well, we thank you for coming home now. I just want to say, I think you really need to give yourself lots of time. Lots of time, especially if you have kids and grandkids, because you know we went through the whole process and everybody got a chance to pick something out. And finally, after a year, I decided that I could get rid of the socks and long and he was on it, long underwear. And my kids had a fit. Well, we could have used that, I said. <laughs> so you have to do things very gradually so that they can come back and say, "Oh, yeah, this shirt I remember now." And stuff. I think that's you a great. You can't do it in a rush. 
Yeah, I think that's a great point. And everybody's timing is different. Some people plan yes. six months in advance. Some people plan six years in advance. So it really is a personal situation there. Planning is the key, really. All right, well, feel free to have some uh, more beverages and such if you like. And if we can be of any help, feel free to let us know. Thank you.